Are you all right, sir? Yes, I'm all right. To finally get a negative result from my last COVID test and to be out of quarantine again. But I'm still pretty mad due to my previous episode I blogged. I understand, sir. And it seems that you can't blog any more films from or connected to 2016 this year. Yeah, I know. So I need to be really, really careful in the future. I mean, who knows what that COVID welder might be plotting next to make the planet sicker than it is now with Omnicron. Sir, the best thing you can do is give your audience positive thoughts and hope that they get their vaccines and boosters soon. <sighs> okay. Now, what to blog this time? Right now, I don't think I'm ready to begin another memory lane of Sophia the First yet. Well, I have an idea for you. Is there a TV special based on the Once Upon a Mattress show that your musical theater friends are rehearsing this season? Hmm. Well, come to think of it, there is, but, uh... Come on, sir, you can do it. All right, then. Cue the logo. Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. And after my last episode, I would like to look at something fun. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are familiar with Hans Christian Andersen's classical fairy tale, The Princess and the Pea. Well, those of you who probably seen my blog of the 2002 animated film back in 2015 might know about it, and in my eyes, this is still an underrated animated family film, with fun and memorable characters, great animation, and charming songs. However, during that blog, I mentioned a stage musical comedy known as Once Upon a Mattress, which my sister Sabrina played the lead character at my old high school years ago. <laughs> Actually, I swam the boat! By the way, my actual introduction to the show was back in the late 2000s when my friends at Musical Theater Village performed it. And to me, Once Upon a Mattress is a really fun show, which I regret not being part of back then, until now. Because Musical Theater Village is doing Once Upon a Mattress again to kick off 2022. And they cast me as the Queen's Royal Wizard. Man... I haven't done a wizard character since The Wizard of Oz in 2010 and 2014. Anyway, little did I know that a couple months after I joined Musical Theater Village in 2005, Disney adapted their own version of Once Upon a Mattress for television. And that's the subject of my blog today. So, airing on television on December 8th, 2005, the special is Once Upon a Mattress. Now, on for the plot of the special. In this hilarious tweaking of the fairy tale The Princess and the Pea, Queen Agravain has ruled that none may marry until her son, Prince Dauntless, marries. However, she has managed to sabotage every princess who comes along. When Sir Harry and Lady Larkin learn that they're going to be parents, wed or not, he goes off to the swamps and brings back Princess Winifred, or Fred for short. The queen is horrified and immediately begins to scheme, but Winifred, with some help from Sir Harry, the king, and the jester, isn't going to be quite so easy to get rid of. So, what are my thoughts? Well, like the show itself, this special is a lot of fun to watch, and nowadays, I think it's another underrated classic. And to further explain why I enjoyed this special, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, believe it or not, this is the fourth time Disney adapted a stage musical for television. The previous films being Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella from 1997, Annie from 1999, and The Music Man from 2003. It's also the eighth episode of the 47th season of The Wonderful World of Disney, and as of 2021, 
It is the last original television movie from that series. The special was directed by Kathleen Marshall, who also choreographed the film's musical numbers, which were originally composed by Mary Rogers and written by Marshall Bayer. Speaking of which, some of my favorite songs in the special include In a Little While, Shy, The Song of Love, or A Girl Named Fred, The Swamps of Home, and Happily Ever After. Also, I must mention the Spanish Panic Dance, which in my opinion seems really hard, since, as some of you know, my dancing skills really suck big time due to my stiff leg. No thanks to that giant cell tumor from summer 2013. Also, by watching it, it is pretty fast-paced, and the choreography is a bit wacky. And that's basically all I got for Mustang Notes. So let's move on to the cast. Let's start with Princess Winifred, played by Tracy Ullman, whom I remember from Kronk's New Groove, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride, 2014's Into the Woods, The Tale of Despero, Happily Ever After from 1993, Pixar's Onward, and she voiced Lucinda's mother, Marla, in Sophia the First. But I'll get to that this Mother's Day, I promise. Anyway, Fred is a princess who comes from the northern swamps. And in my opinion, she's the funniest character in the entire special due to her childlike personality. And she's also much less refined than the rest of Castle's residents. Plus, I think Tracy Ullman's acting gives Winifred a spunky and fun charm. Next, we come to Prince Dauntless, played by Dennis O'Hare, whom has been in Quarantine and Milk. Big mistake. Anyway, like Fred, Dauntless is slightly childlike, but he easily falls in love with the princess, just as he has with the many others that have come before her. Also, at the same time, Dauntless is determined to get married to a princess who can succeed in his mother's tests. Next, we have Dauntless's spiteful mother, Queen Agravain, played by Carol Burnett, whom not only played Winifred in the original stage version, but she also played Agatha Hannigan in Annie 1982, Sour Kangaroo in Blue Skies Horton Hears a Who, and Hera in The Secret World of Arietti. Anyway, in my opinion, Agravain is a very arrogant woman, and she's very full of herself. Plus, she's very over-possessive that she'll do anything to make sure that any princess who tries to prove their work for Dauntless's hand fails, even if it has to involve sabotage. But when Winifred comes to the castle, Agravain tries to exhaust her with the Spanish panic dance, and later that evening, she tries to test Winifred's sensitivity by placing a tiny pea underneath 20 mattresses. Dauntless's father, King Sextimus, is played by Tom Smothers, whom I remember from The Bear Who Slept Through Christmas. Sextimus is a character whom was cursed with mutinous sometime before Dauntless was born, and the only way for his voice to be cured is for a mouse to devour a hawk. Anyway, what I like about Sextimus is that He's a pretty good supporting character, especially during the man-to-man -man talk song. Plus, he communicates via hand gestures, which I think is pretty hard, but also useful since I know that actions speak louder than words. Next up is Sir Harry, played by Matthew Morrison, whom has been in music and lyrics and underdogs. In my opinion, Harry is really the noblest knight in the entire kingdom, and Prince Dauntless shows true faith in him. Also, Harry's true reason for bringing back a princess to the kingdom was so that he and Lady Larkin could get married, as well as all the rest of the kingdom. Next is his love interest, Lady Larkin, played by the beautiful and talented Zoe Deschanel, whom I remember from Sony's Surf's Up, DreamWorks Trolls, along with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and, ugh, Elf. In my opinion, Larkin is a very kind and refined noblewoman, 
but she kind of jumps to conclusions sometimes. For you see, at first, after meeting Princess Winifred, she believed that she was just another chambermaid, and she still voiced that she did afterwards. Later, Larkin attempts to escape the kingdom after breaking up with Sir Harry for a night, but she gets caught and thrown into the dungeon by Queen Agravain for eavesdropping. Also, I must mention that the part where Lady Larkin and Princess Winifred have a tear-jerking conversation after she was released from her cell was a pretty touching moment. Last but not least, we come to the Queen's right-hand man and my current character, the Royal Wizard, played by Edward Hibbert, whom was in Earthworm Jim and the Lion King sequels. What I can say about this character is that he's a very quiet person who usually keeps to himself, but he's very loyal to Queen Agravain and he puts her tests for the princesses in action. Also, there are times where the wizard adjusts Agravain's aches and pains whenever she feels a lot of pressure in her body. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Once Upon a Mattress is a really entertaining TV special from the wonderful world of Disney. The story is charming, the songs are fun and humorous, and the characters are whimsical, and of course, the actors look like they were having a lot of fun. However, my one nitpick is that the narrating minstrel is absent in this version, but that doesn't really prevent me from enjoying this special whatsoever. As for my rating, I'll give it a... Hmm... A 95% out of 100. Yeah, that should do it. Now, aside from this show, my theater friends are going to be doing another fairy tale musical later this summer. But I'll get to that franchise when the time comes. In the meantime, be sure to see Once Upon a Mattress at Musical Theater Village and go to this link at the bottom for ticket information. But I must warn you, you have until March 13th to see it. Also, be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power.